Hello guys, today we have two patients for repair. Here is the first one which was sent by a viewer all the way from the Czech Republic. He contacted me via the Moving forum and explained that his Raspberry Pi has symptoms of that memory. So let's take a look. As you can see it's very well packed, though I don't really see the point of the aluminum foil. Also it's pretty dirty, so first we we'll go in the ultrasonic cleaner for about 30 seconds. That should be enough to clean most of the dust. In the meantime, I wanted to let you know that the 6th PCB Way project design contest just started. This year there are two design teams for electronic project and for mechanical project and you can participate in both categories. There are going to be top 3 prizes, a prize for a popular design as well as a participation prize. You have time until the 15th of January 2024 to submit your projects and the results will be announced on the 8th of March 2024. To learn more about the contest please follow the link in the video description. Now that the board is a lot cleaner we will proceed with the most important thing we need to do which is to verify the problem. For this purpose I'm going to plug it in and we will see what happens. So as you can see it refuses to post and the green LED flashes 8 times which means there is no SDRAM detected and it's usually referring to that memory chip. After the diagnosis is confirmed I'm going to isolate the SDRAM surroundings so they don't get damaged by the hot air later. Now I grab my trusty board holder and secure the pie in place. This way it won't move and also the risk of knocking components from the underside of the PCB is minimized. Then we can proceed with desoldering the original 4GB LPDDR4 chip using a bit of flux and hot air station set to 410 degrees Celsius and 50% airflow. After we remove the chip successfully, we need to dilute the unleaded solder with lead to make it easier and safer to work with the board. For this and for the following step, I'm going to use a soldering iron set to 400 degrees Celsius. Next, we take solder wick and remove as much solder as possible from the pads so they are flat and even. Then we need to prepare the board by cleaning the burnt flux with a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol. And again using a Q-tip we apply a very thin layer of fresh flux. Originally this pie had 4 GB of RAM. But we are going to install 8 since that's what the customer wanted. And so this repair will double as an upgrade. Since the new chip has leaded solder balls we are going to use lower air temperature to solder it. That will be 360 degrees Celsius with 50% airflow. When we are done with the soldering, we can carefully remove the heat isolation and after it cools down to room temperature, we can power it on to see if the repair was successful. As you can see the pipe powers on just fine and detects the 8 gigabytes of RAM. Now before I send it back to the customer, I'm going to run MEM tester to make sure everything is fine. While this is running, let's take a look at the second patient, which is a bit of an unusual device to repair. For those of you who have no idea what this is, it's a self-leveling laser level. The customer said that it fell from about 2 meters while working and since then the laser no longer works. Now let's open it up to figure out why it doesn't work and try to fix it. There should be 4 screws on the bottom, but I see only 3, so probably someone has been inside before. After unscrewing them, the top half of the housing can be removed. At first glance I see a ripped wire and a piece of masking tape that I don't really think should be here. Now let's take a closer look. Here we can see that there are two very tiny wires connecting the two boards together. One of them is ripped and for some reason it's running outside of the plastic bracket. So I'm going to reroute it on the inside where I believe it's supposed to be and then I will solder it in place. Now let's see what's hiding under the masking tape. What a surprise, another ripped wire. As you can see these pads are labeled LED plus and LED minus. So that's why it stopped working after the drop. The two wires just have ripped off and so have cut the power to the LED. Let's connect this wire and we'll test it. 
After placing the batteries inside and turning it on, we can see that the repair was successful. Why you watch me assemble it? I want to say a few things. First of all, huge thank you to my patrons James the Matt and Michael for supporting my work. Also, if you need to get something repaired, no matter the make and model, you can fill out the mail-in form. The link to it is in the video description. Lastly, I make sure to read all the comments under my videos. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Now let's see how the run test on the Pi went. As you can see, every test passed with OK. So the Pi is ready to be shipped. That's it for today. As always, thanks for watching. Till the next time. Bye.